In this video, we are going to walk through a coding solution to the fetch all restaurant names REST API technical interview question. So let's jump in. So in this question, we are given access to a fake REST API endpoint, this API restaurants. The endpoint is paginated and expects a required integer query parameter page, which is one based. So for example, we have example.com forward slash API forward slash restaurants and then with a the query parameter of page equals two. So this will request the second page and it will respond with a JSON array for that page. So our job is to implement a function that takes page number and then does three things. Firstly, it will issue an asynchronous get request to this API restaurant's endpoint with the page. If the server does not reply with a status of 200, we can immediately return an empty array. Otherwise, we want to parse the payload, extract each restaurant's name and sort the names alphabetically, so A to Z, and return the resulting array. So if we look at an example here in our input, we can see we've got a page number of one and you can see our mock data is an array of arrays where each inner array represents a page. So here we only have one page. And in this first page, we have three restaurants. And you can see here our output is simply the restaurant's names ordered in alphabetical order. So B is first, so we got Burger Barn, C is after that. So we got Curry Corner. And then finally we have Pasta Place. And so if we look here in example two, our input is we have a page number of three and a mock data, which is two inner arrays representing page number one and page number two. And you can see here, despite there being data in the first two pages, because we wanted to select data from the third page, our output is an empty array. And that is because only the first two pages exist. Hence why we are returning an empty array because there is no third page in this API. So as always, we have to use fetch for JavaScript and requests in Python. And for network failures or non-200 status codes, they must be handled by simply returning an empty array. So let's jump into the coding solution now. So as always, it's good practice to have some error handling here because we're making a network request. So I'll wrap it in a try catch. And here for the error, we're not gonna do anything with it. As the question said, we're just going to return an empty array, but obviously in a production environment, you would do some more graceful error handling and obviously provide feedback to the user. Then the next thing we want to do is make a request using the fetch API. So I can say const response equals await. And again, we're using await here, which will pause the execution until the network promise settles, but, but without blocking the event loop. And again, this is fine as we are in an async asynchronous function here. So I can then say fetch and then I will add in the URL. So this is the base URL here. So we've got example.com API restaurants, but then we also have to add in this page number here. So I'll add in the query parameter. So page, and then we will add that in page. Get that right, page number likes. And so here we're passing in that page number. So the API knows which page to select from. Then after that, what I wanna do is I wanna check if there's a, a status code not of 200. So I can say if response.status does not equal 200. Well, as the question description said, we simply want to return an empty array. And then next, what we want to do is parse the response body. So we can say const data equals await response.json. And so what we're doing here is we are parsing the JSON response body into a JavaScript array. And again, await keeps the syntax synchronous looking while remaining non-blocking. And now what we want to do is we want to say return data.map. So we're going to map over every restaurant. And then, so what do we want? Well, we want the restaurant's name, so or.name, but then also we have to sort it in uh, alphabetical order. So we can say dot sort, and again, get out the names, A and B. And then what we can do is we can inline return A dot local compare with B. And so essentially what we're doing here is this will perform a local aware alphabetical sorting. So different alphabets are ordered correctly. And then this sorted list of names is simply returned. So let's run the test case and see if they pass. This one's failing. Let me see why I misspelled locale compare. Let's run it again. Perfect. They pass. Let's run the test suite to make sure all the tests pass. Perfect. All the tests are passing. So if you want to try the question for yourself, the link is in the description and hopefully you got some value out of it. If you did, please like and subscribe and share it with a friend. It helps the channel out a lot and I will see you in the next one.